Yes, we've spent years hearing the same thing, Samsung considering getting rid of the Galaxy Note, but this time I think they're actually serious. As yes, it looks like the end of the Galaxy Note is near because Samsung has something bigger planned for 2021, or should I say larger. There's a full review of the Galaxy Z Fold 2 and it looks like really, really good. But yeah, I know, where did they get the phone? And we have some very interesting features leaked for the iPhone 12 Pro line that uh, they, they just have to happen. I'm Jaime Rivera, it's finally time, and the only thing that I could think of is that scene in the Galaxy Unpack where the guy was like, Mystic Bronze. This is Pocket Now Daily, sponsored by MediaTek. Stick around to learn why you should pick MediaTek for your next purchase. The official news today start with deals and uh, we're actually gonna start with some Galaxy deals because that's one thing that's happening right now. Let's start it off with the Galaxy S10 Plus, which is currently $150 off on Amazon, leaving the unlocked 128 gigs of storage variant for $700 shipped. If you want more storage, you can go 512, that's also $150 off, which pretty much will cost you 950 bucks and you'll get a headphone jack. And then the regular S10 is also getting the same discounts on more variants. The Razer Blade Stealth 13 is also $300 off, leaving it at $1,500 shipped for the Intel Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage. Finally, the latest iPad mini is $50 off, leaving the entry-level gold variant for $350. Now we've got more deals for Samsung tablets, TCL phones, and others in the description. And all right, I think we finally know why Apple decided to make the switch to their own Apple Silicon. I mean, if you look at the Intel roadmap, it's not necessarily what I would call amazing. Whereas if we look at the roadmap for TSMC and what they're doing with ARM chips, it's getting kind of crazy. See, TSMC is currently hosting their annual conference and they just shared their roadmap for the next two years. I mean, the company will employ 8,000 new employees to manufacture three nanometer chips, which should hit the market at the end of 2022. And they also have been working on the two nanometer process, which will be built on the gate all around technology rather than the FinFET solution that we've seen for years that will actually make part for the three nanometer process. Now we're not exactly sure when we're going to get those two nanometers, but the thing about it is one of the major rumors for this year is that the next iPhones, the next Macs are coming with five nanometer on the A whatever bionic we're getting this year. So stay tuned. It's going to get really interesting and in Intel. I mean, come on, guys. And since we're talking Apple, let's move the spotlight over to everything that's happening between Cupertino and Epic Games. We do know that the company gave Epic Games 14 days to figure themselves out and it keeps just developing in very interesting ways. So if you remember, Apple gave Epic Games 14 days to remove their direct payment option from Fortnite and those 14 days are three days away. And well, Epic just filed the restraining order to prevent Apple from blocking Fortnite updates, but the judge ruled in favor of Apple in this instance. Now, however, Mark Gurman reports that the judge is inclined to unblock the Unreal Engine off the store, but not Fortnite, which kind of makes sense. I mean, it's only Fortnite that's the problem. And of course, inclined doesn't necessarily mean that that's the decision made. It just means that they're leaning more towards the option at the moment. In the meantime, Apple is ready to welcome Fortnite back to the App Store so long as they remove the direct payment option. Apple knows that Epic wants to get this done as soon as possible because there's a new Fortnite season launching on the 27th, which is days before the 14 day deadline and iOS users won't be able to enjoy it. Now, since the restraining orders weren't granted, I think Epic pretty much has to cave on this one, which, I mean, they're not forced to become part of the App Store or serve iOS, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not that I'm trying to side with Apple, it's just that the terms of service have been there since day one. It's been 10 years. So I didn't think they were gonna win either. I wish they would, but oh well. Now let's continue talking Apple, but for something really interesting, let's discuss iPhone 12. We've been talking for months uh, over the possibilities of 120 hertz, the fact that it might not happen, the fact that Apple is delayed, that they've got drivers. No, wait, that they have the panels, but they don't have the drivers. Now it seems that, you know, we it might still happen. 
Today we've got some new screenshots from John Proster that give us some hope, I guess. The screenshots show the toggles in the settings screens to enable high refresh rate and enable adaptive refresh rate, and they clearly show that this is 120 hertz. He also posted another screenshot of the camera settings showing off some new features. There are different toggles, including enable LiDAR from the camera, enable video modes, which include 4K at 120 frames per second, 4K at 240 frames per second for slow-mo, and then there's another toggle for an enhanced night mode, advanced noise reduction, bit depth video, and zoom capabilities. He also mentioned that the 120 hertz is for the 6.7 inch iPhone 12 Pro, which I assume that would be the max. And again, this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. Uh, it could also be, and judging by the design of that menu, it looks like if that's part of the accessibility settings, we'll see. Now, all right, let's talk Samsung. It starts getting interesting. And really it has a lot to do with this Galaxy Z Fold 2, which I wasn't really excited about until they showed it on Unpacked, but the problem is they didn't really provide much details about it. We got them today, but not from Samsung. See, a Chinese channel just posted a full four minute review of the phone, and we can't really understand what they're saying. Obviously you can't translate it, but this review gives us pictures and video shots of this phone from every possible angle. We get to see the device fully working, the 120 Hertz display, the outer display, and more. They provide some audio tests, gaming tests, and they also compared it to the original Fold, at least from the design standpoint. The only thing we're missing is camera samples, even if they showed us the camera working, but we do expect it to perform like the Galaxy Note 20 in this department. Stay tuned, we're close to the official launch. It should be happening anytime soon. And folks, before we get to the hottest news, in addition to today's question, here's a word from today's sponsor, MediaTek. Did you know that its technology powers the popular Sony WF-1000X Mark III's? These were the first true wireless earbuds to feature true active noise cancellation. 24-bit audio signal processing also makes these one of my favorites for sound quality. We have a battery life of up to 24 hours with the carrying case and full integration at a tap with the Google Assistant and even Amazon's Alexa Assistant. Follow the first link to to find options on where to buy it on Amazon. And the second link will show you why brands like Sony trust MediaTek. Thank you for sponsoring this video. And finally, the most interesting news today have to do with Samsung once again and the Galaxy Note lineup. For many years, we've heard the possibility of Samsung ditching the Note, for them to just over glorify the Galaxy S. And we've actually even seen how the company has ended up glorifying the Galaxy S even if we still get a note that's sort of the same thing, only with an S Pen and a couple of extra features. Uh, we've seen the company change its mind, then do it just as after the Note 8, but we keep hearing the rumors that it's gonna die. Today, we sort of have a confirmation, sort of, but we get to hear why. According to a new report from The Elec, we will be getting three Galaxy S21 models next year. The top end variant will bring an S Pen. According to this report, the S21 is codenamed Unbound, and it has three different project names, M1, N2, and O3, with O3 being the ultra variant that will allegedly bring the S Pen. Now, where things get a little more interesting is when the report adds that Samsung is looking forward to introduce the Galaxy Z Fold three with S Pen support. I told you it was going to get bigger and larger. This most likely means that the Z Fold 3 will serve as Samsung's fall flagship, which will replace the Note lineup since the S21 will already bring the S Pen features. It still isn't explicitly clear if Samsung is getting rid of the Note moniker. The future for it remains uncertain, but I would like to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Think this is a good idea, S21 with an S Pen? Because I think it is. I think it's great that we're going to finally get an early, meaning a full powered latest Snapdragon Galaxy S with an S Pen and you can choose the Ultra or you just, you don't have to choose it if you don't want to. And then my God, finally, finally a foldable with an S Pen. That would be fantastic. For me, the tablet form factor is the best one for the S Pen in my opinion, but we would love to know what you think in the comments down below. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on PocketNow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. Follow me on my personal handles to see me. Oh, my God. I don't know what to say about mid-rangers anymore, but please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.